Hello, it's Sarah. I'm going to make a pumpkin. One of these guys. These are polymer clay wrapped around a baby food jar. And then I put a little tea light inside. So I'm going to show you how I did that. I did a live uh, back a few videos where I made this little guy. So today I just wanted to do it on my camcorder and show you a little bit more in detail. I can zoom in a little bit and um, show you that way. So, and that way I won't be distracted with all the chit chat. And so I'm gonna take a half a block of Sculpey 3. This is called Just Orange. And I have a little bit of brown. And I just wanna change the color a little bit. Um, I have both of these were done with Primo Orange and I just want to change add a little bit of brown to the orange to get this like kinda um, I guess it's it's not as orange as I'd like let me just I'm hoping I'll do this I'm gonna just add this much brown to it and change it so I'm just start rolling it and this Sculpey uh, clay, look how soft it is. It's really soft enough for me to uh, condition it by hand. So I'm just going to use my pasta machine though. I, I like using a pasta machine to condition my clay. And I'm just going to blend these colors together and hopefully change the color. And hopefully it'll be a big enough piece. Look. So I'm going to fold it a couple times. I'm going to cover a beech nut baby food. And these were actually on sale at my Acme. I guess it was old, but I like it because it's tall. I have four different sizes here. So this is going to be the thin and tall one. So I'm going to do that one today. And I also put the little battery operated tea lights inside to light them up because I tried putting just a regular tea light in there and you snuff it out when you um, put the lid on and I like the lid of the baby food jar specifically because I can put the the little stem on the pumpkin so I like having a lid because you could just do this on a votive, a regular glass votive. I've covered glass quite a bit with clay and I don't use any type of adhesive. I just use the stickiness of the clay and the glass and I actually, um, I just washed this with regular soap and water and took off the tags or the label I should say. Alright, so let's see what color this is now. So this is what it started out as. And it's just a tone deeper, so I like that. I'm going to stick with this color. Now I just got to hope I have enough. So I'm going to roll out a little sausage and then stick it through the pasta machine and try and get it so that it's going to fit. I don't think it is. I'm a little nervous. I think I'm going to need more. Uh... Yeah, I think I'm going to go down a notch on my machine and make this a little thinner. And then it might fit. I have Kiwi here with me. Hi, Kiwi. You want to see, say, you want to say hi? Um, I don't think this is going to be... This might do it. And if you if you just let gravity, let me see. I don't want to go up over the lip of the uh, threads of the glass so that I can screw the lid on. But just let gravity kind of place the clay or um, adhere it. And I'm just pushing it down up against the lip of the jar. This might fit. I might, might do it if I'm lucky. I'm kind of giving it a little stretch. And I think 
we did it. I think I made it. So just like gravity and then I'm just going to tip it over onto the bottom. And if it doesn't reach, I'm going to use what's left because I'm going to trim this to put on the bottom. Because all my other ones have a full bottom. Like I, You probably don't need a, any clay down there, but I'll just do it. I'm going to do it. I've done it like that on all the other ones. I'm actually going to cut this. Oops. Just straighten it out. And then continue around, letting gravity get the air bubbles out. There's a little green there, but I don't mind because I'm going to add green leaves and some flowers. This is going to be the mom of my little pumpkin family. Alright, so I have that. I just, I'm going to pull off this is so soft and just connect that seam and I am not a perfectionist in the crafting world I am a good enough and I just want it to be good enough and and by that it always looks pretty good it doesn't it never looks terrible because I wouldn't you know I wouldn't be happy if it was terrible <laughs> so now I'm just pressing that seam and I'm leaving quite a lot of fingerprints on here, which I don't mind, but I am trying to smooth the air bubbles. And this clay is so soft. Oy vey. I'm going to take this, what's left here, and cut it a little bit. I have a big air bubble. This the jar kind of went in, it dipped in, and so there was a ton of air under there. So I'm just gonna cut it and push the air towards that so that I can seal up the bottom. I'm gonna put texture on here with it's a Macon's texture, what do they call it? Macon's clay sand. That's that's all it says on here, but it's like a plastic touch texture sheet. I think there's still a big bubble here. I think, no, I think it's okay. All right, so I'm just trying to smooth out some of the finger marks I've made and make it look halfway decent. Pumpkins are not perfect shapes, and it's fun. I'm looking forward to going to the pumpkin patch. I did not go last year, but on my walk today, I noticed the leaves are changing. So tis the time, and I do enjoy fall. Whoops, see there's a bubble. I'll just cut it, and then hopefully squeeze that air out of there. Um, but yeah, it is fall. And it was a beautiful, well, no it wasn't, it was rainy, but when I went out, the temperature is what I like. I love the 70 degrees, and it's so nice. All right, so that's it. I've covered, now I'm going to do the same thing, and I don't know if I'll have enough now. That was a, oops, look, I just stabbed my fingernail into it. This is really soft. Really, really soft. Sculpey tends to be softer than the Primo and so maybe I should use Primo. I'm just going to set that aside and gather up some of this clay. I'll mix this with that other batch that I had so it'll be a little bit different 
but I had that other little piece of, um, and here's even a little bit of orange. I'm just going to blend this together and hopefully we'll get enough to just cover this lid. And when I was, I asked Joe, I thought, Joe's my husband, I thought maybe if we drilled holes in the lid, you know, after you bake it, I guess you could drill some holes. Would that be enough to let the, to let air in if you wanted to put an actual um, tea light in there, you know, light a fire, because fire needs air, so you'll snuff it out if you don't have holes, so... I mean, we just kind of, I found the, the light-up ones, which I loved, and so um, I didn't have to worry about it, but I thought, you guys could probably try that. I'm down for trying things, you know. All right, so this, hopefully, look at all the bubbles. So soft. I'm just going slow, and... sticking just kind of pushing I don't think it's um, gonna fit eh, I'm gonna make it happen I'm just patching it I don't like it I don't like that I'm doing that I would prefer that it's all the same uh, thickness there's another air bubble. But it seems like it's going to be fine because I'm able to just pull out the air, the um, finger marks and all that. So I'm going to just cut it around the edge. And this is a, um, a polymer clay blade. You can get it in the, in the clay aisle at the craft stores. And that's a great tool. You have to have that in your stash. I mean, I have, I say have to, but it's a worthwhile tool to have. I'm sure you can make do without it. See, there's an air bubble. I'm going to have to pop it because it keeps coming back. All right. There we go. All right. So now we're all covered. I'm going to start to add some texture with that texture sheet and then I'll show you what I've done on the other ones. One of the main things I want to do is put lines in this because the pumpkin has those, you know, it has these little bumps and they're really cool. I love painting pumpkins. Pumpkins are very fun to paint. But... Um, I forgot to put them on two of my pumpkins. This is not shaping up to be as good enough as I had hoped. Usually my good enough's a little better. <laughs> but it is it will be good enough for sure. I think the clay is just so doggone soft. Doggone it. Alright. So let me get that texture sheet in here. I'm just going to basically take this and roll it gently across. Because of the shape of it, it's not going to... Oh boy! My tile wouldn't move. I'm going to put it up against the edge. And really, you can just do it like this. And you can use anything. You could use sandpaper. You could use a crinkled up piece of paper that just has wrinkly marks in it. I just have these. And that's what I say all the time is use what you have. I've gone out and bought a lot of different tools. And so I like to dig them out when, I, when I'm doing a project that could, it could work with. I want to use them if I can help it. Oop, there's some purple clay. So... I have this and it's you know I chose to use it so all right so there's some texture I think I'll put some on the bottom why not a 
at least around the edges and it'll a lot of it will probably come out from me handling it because see look even where I just put my fingers to do that so it's kind of good to stick your fingers inside it but I like that so let's do the lid I have some thick piece, some thick edges, bubble. There's an air bubble I can't get out. Now the only thing I've really planned out ahead of time is her face. So I went to Pinterest and I put in pumpkin faces. And you know what, right now at this time of year they're selling the little carving books. They come with like the tools to carve pumpkins and those are great to get ideas for faces too. But we've all carved a pumpkin at least once in our lives for the most part. And I just kind of went with different, I, for, he's my only angry pumpkin. He's angry. He's really sweet. I love his round nose. And this is just the more traditional, the more traditional jack-o'-lantern face. And then my mom is going to have this face. She's going to be more of like a, actually as I'm looking at this, it totally reminds me of one of my peachy keen face stamps. I have a face stamp that's very similar to that. But I just found this on Pinterest and I kind of took some of the eyes and I took a mouth that I liked and I played around like this was this was the eyes at first. These two and then it ended up being like that. And I don't know how I'm going to do those, but I'm going to try. And the first thing I want to do that well, I think I'll do the face first. And I'm going to use my Exacto blade. And I'm going to think about it. And I think, I think I'm going to keep it right in the middle. For the most part, these faces are all kind of in the middle. They're centered on the body, you know. So let's see. I'm going to do an oval shape. I'm going to use just a, like, pokey tool. Let me think. I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use this pokey tool. This is a um, perler or something like that. I forget what it's called. But to just draw it, and I don't know if this is going to be good, but I'm going to try. Because I don't want to cut out. And you know what? I think I am going to use my X-Acto blade because what I'm thinking is I think the clay So this is her eye. I'm going to take this out and I want to leave the lid. See, so that's the eye. Let me zoom in. I'm sorry. So you can see the top, and when I antique it, when I put the paint on there, it'll go into that little eyelid area. And I'm going to use my pokey tool again and make some eyelashes. So just have an eyelash or two. And they should go all the way down to the lid, so. I don't really love that. I don't know why it looks much cuter on my... All right, and then we're going to do the same thing. I'm tipping it because I have to make this even. This clay is so soft. I wish it wasn't as soft. I'm going to go down. And I just want it to be the same approximate size. Now I'm 
going to cut. So I'm cutting the opening. It's a little bigger. I think this eye is a little bigger than that eye. And I don't actually love how that looks at all. So I'm erasing. Look at that. I'm going to try it different. I'm going to do a different approach. I just don't like that. I'm going to do a round nose, just an actual, you know what I could probably use? I'm going to do it because it'll make a nice round circle. This is my etch and pearl tool. And I'm going to put it right in the middle and cut that out. And my smile is going to be, hmm, see I think, you know what, I'm probably better off just using my X-Acto bleed. I think that's what I'm going to do. So the top lip is just going to go across, almost straight, a little curve, but the bottom is what I want to make like that and take this out. Alright, I think that looks good. Maybe I should put a tooth in there, but I was going to make these little smiley cheeks and see when I antique it, paint should go into that, into the line that I'm making and it'll create, kind of like it with the pokey tool better though because it's more defined. It's just that the clay is too soft. You know what? I'm going to totally go out on a limb and recommend that you guys... It's, it's so out on a limb. I'm out on a limb. No, I'm not kidding. Um, use Primo. This is too soft. Actually, when you're sculpting, just use Primo. It's just too soft, the, the Sculpey 3. I don't like it. It's too sticky and soft and it's just too hard to get and I'm gonna make this a little no I like it it's off center but I like it I'm gonna go up around the eye and remove a little bit more over here and I'm just gonna leave the eyelid there but I actually cut it with the exacto blade Maybe I'll put dimensional eye, eyelashes. Hi, Kiwi. How you doing? It's my little birdie on my shoulder. All right. I'm going to look in the camera and see. I like it. It's not perfect by far. It's too soft. I can't... I don't have as much control as I would like and um, yeah it's it's not like because if this was stiffer it would be much easier to get just sharp cuts so that I I would say is a tip um, where's my exacto blade And this eyelid is a little weird, but I do, alright, let's put some eyebrows, and I just want to do little rounded eyebrows like this. I like that one better because it's kind of arched. You know, browser, browser important or they could make you look angry or sad or blank so they're a little off this one's over too far I'm being very critical of myself I'm gonna put in an eyelash or two right here 
comes my doggy. Hi guys. I'm making a video, Matt. Hi Kirby. Hi Kirby. All right. Now we're going to put an eyeball on the bottom. Make a snake of clay and I'm just going to put a little ball of clay right at the bottom. And tack it down, like flatten it down. There we go. And that's it. I think she's looking a lot less cute than I thought she would look, but I think it'll be good when the when we get finished, when all said and done. And then you'll have to see, look, I flattened out a lot of it, so but the next thing I want to do is the lines. And I have this cool tool. It's a Christy Friesen. These are stainless steel. I bought them, so I'm using them. But what I like about it is it has this kind of blade edge, and then it thickens out. So I'm going to push this down into the, into the piece as I make these lines. And um, hopefully it will give me like a... Uh, Eh, didn't exactly do what I'd hoped, but I think it's good. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go down the middle a little bit, just right there. Two more. And you can use a toothpick. You can use whatever you have. But I just wanted to make sure I did not forget those this time because I have two that with and two without. All right, so that is our mama. She looks pretty cute. We could add, I think I want to add some flowers to her. There's an air bubble right there. Um, we're going to add some flowers, and I'd actually like this to be deeper. But see, I'm going to mess it up. I just don't like the way the eye, because the clay is so soft. But I like that better. The X-Acto Blade line is just much thinner than this. And I want it to be a bit, a little thicker. Hi Kiwi, she's biting my ear. Why are you biting my ear? Okay, now I can see it a little better. Alrighty, I'm going to work on my stem. I think I used a mixture of colors for some of them, and then I ended up putting copper. So I'm just going to go with this brown. I'm going to cut a piece of this off. Don't need very much. And get it conditioned. My pasta machine just helps me get the clay soft. But your warm hands and, you know, will get them soft too. So I'm just rolling this in my palms. And it is good. I'm going to shape it into a little tiny, uh, stem. Just roll it. And I like that. I'm, I'm kind of making it thin in the middle. I'm going to make pinch out these edges. I can tell that this is primo clay. It is so much firmer than what I was just dealing with with that orange. So it's better. I'm just pinching out these edges because this is going to be how the stem adheres to the top of my pumpkin. So, oops. 
got to get that. All right, but let's make the top. Well, I can actually do it better when it's in my hand. So I'm going to just hold it and push with my thumb and squeeze, kind of create a little top. It looks like a little hat almost. So I'm just, that's it. That looks like a good stem to me. I'm not worried about that. And then on the other ones, which you're not really seeing, which I'm finding, this one I covered up because I really didn't like how it turned out with those little balls of clay, which I like. I'm going to be doing that on her too. Um, this one I cut into little almost like tree trunk looking, um, what, what do we call it, um, the roots. So I cut it into little triangles that look like roots before I adhered it. And the same thing with this one. Actually, I'm going to do that. I am going to do it because I think it looks cool. So let me see. There's a little... I don't know. Just just try and make it a cool shape. You know, you guys know how pumpkins have those funny looking stems. They're funny looking. So let me just try and make a couple of little marks here to Just make it look like there's some type of roots coming out of here. Good enough. I'm going to stick it right on top of my pumpkin lid. Right in the middle. And give some pressure. So I'm actually really giving good pressure and pushing that down. I don't use any glue adhesives or bacon bond or anything. And it, I have not had an issue. So that is what it looks like. It's the biggest one I've done yet tallest and I love it I think it's gonna be cute so we can um, add the texture back into this in a minute but the first thing I want to do is think about my design what this little girl is gonna have and I think that's gonna be flowers and to do that, so we're gonna need leaves let's go ahead and put a few leaves on I'm gonna do two colors of green I have this green uh, pearlescent, or I'm sorry, this is actually glitter green, and this one's the pearlescent green. So I'm going to just, again, condition your clay, get it nice and mixed in. Same thing with this one. And if you have a little mini um, cookie cutter or whatever I'm just gonna use actually I think I might use a cookie cutter for a couple and then I'll freehand a couple too or maybe I'll use this little one we'll see I'm gonna use my cookie cutters you know why guys one two three because I have um, um I have this one really cool shape and it's probably on my desk I like that better but I have this other one this one I'm gonna use them this one and this one. I'm going to go down to, let's see, this is like a number seven on my pasta machine. And sorry about that, guys. Um, my battery died. It happens. Even with my camcorder, I, I have a plug right here, so I just plugged it in and I can record. Um, but I was just cutting out the leaves to put on my little pumpkin. Um, and I used cookie cutters this time, but you don't have to. You can just cut them with your X-Acto blade. I'm going to take my 
I'm going to use my pokey tool, this little pokey tool right here, and make, let me zoom in. And just leave it on here. I like to pull towards me when I make uh, these lines in the leaves for some reason. It just it's just easier, and that's why I do it. And sorry about that guys my plug came out so I'm sorry I'm having technical difficulties tonight that is my plug I just want to make sure it's got enough room I'm just putting it over here on my desk I have a little hook that I okay everything seems to be good I'm zooming in and I was making the lines on my leaves <sighs> so, I am going to also make lines on my little um, stem. Looking for my blade. Here it is. Taking my pokey tool, and I'm just going to poke some texture into the very top of the stem. As much or as little as you want. And then I'm going to make little tree trunky lines. Just rough it up a little. And actually, I think the stems are are white a lot of time. Not white, but they're they're a much lighter color. I actually just thought of that, but I don't know why I've just used brown. So when you do yours, you make your pumpkin whatever color you want. And you can also make a gourd if you like gourds, because gourds are pretty. I put some texture in the root parts, even though I'm probably going to cover it up. And that's good. Give it a little twist too if I want. That's cool. And I'm going to add that texture back in because I keep taking it off now that I've finished adhering that. And I'm going to put some of these little I'm gonna put I'm not gonna put my leaves on yet I'm gonna wait and I'm well I actually I am I'm gonna kind of bend them a little let me make sure I'm still recording adhere them I use this little tool it's another Christy Friesen tool and I'm just gonna touch it there at the stem area and bend it over the top and kind of push down and so it has a little dimensional, it's hanging off a little bit. Let's do another big one. Over here. Same thing, I'm just going to push down at the stem area and then push it down here. I'm going to put a little one. I'm kind of just bending it to give it some movement, you know, so it looks a little more alive. Put it down next to that one and push it down so that it can adhere. And just make sure it's kind of attached, like it's, because it will stick, I'm telling you. I've never had anything fall off, but never say never. So, I mean, if you wanted to put a little squirt of maybe some bacon bond underneath it it would probably it wouldn't do any harm and I'm just making a little tip on here and making a little 
more interesting looking. I'll put him a little over. I don't really want to make that tip go down, but see, I'll break it. If I, I think that's good. I'm going to leave it like that. And then this one. Right here. This one will probably be my most elaborate one because I've made three already and I've, I see what I like and what I don't like. And these little guys are going to go around her face. So I'm going to put one here. I'm going to put the big one. up here what you hear Matt what's he getting Matt she knows what you're doing my bird she's like I I want a piece and curl I'm curling the tip of that little leaf up I just curled it and just tap it down I'm going to put some stems and uh, some more texture. I'm going to put some leaves too. I need a couple more, um, not leaves, flowers. And leaves. Should I make, I'm going to make another dark blue, I mean dark green, that one. And a light green, this one. Hopefully the camera's still on. What you want? You want to go see Matt? Huh? She's playing in my hair. It's so cute. Oh, sorry, Bubby. You want to go back? You want to go back to your cage? So I'm going to roll this out as thin as I can. These are going to just be little stems for those leaves. And I, I'm so rough, like honestly, see look, I just totally obliviated that roll. Obliviated, is that the word I'm using? Sorry, it's set forward. I mean, you can make a little curl. Why couldn't we, right? But I'll pull it off. That's why we shouldn't, because <laughs> I tend to pull everything off of things because I'm too rough. So let's tack that in. 
and I'm gonna try and you know what I'll make it curl and then go up and just like that I mean, that looks cute. I wish it was a little... There's a piece of orange in there that I don't love, but we'll do it on this side. Got to attach them. What kiwi? What do you want? Usually when she makes a noise or something she does she is trying to tell me something so she's cheeping at me she's trying to say something sometimes she's saying I could go to the bathroom because birds poo a lot you know they're light for flight so I'm, gonna, I'm just curling this around making it cute I'm just trying to make it cute and it might not look cute actually it might look a mess I think if they both go the same way, it looks cuter. Tack it down. And put a piece here. Tack it down. There's going to be little flowers. I'm going to put flowers near there. So actually, let me make a little vine over here. chewing gum I know I'm gonna hear about it I'm gonna put a little vine see I push too hard and my vines get too thin put one right here And then I'll be able to just put a few little flowers kind of off. I'm going to do applique flowers. And I posted, I'm going to post a video after this one of, of me antiquing these. I've already antiqued them. And I added um, Viva Inca Gold to make the shine, the shimmer. So after I bake him, that's what I'm going to do. But, um... I already I'm gonna post it after this so that you can see how to finish them off uh, I want a little bit more here of a vine what's the matter Kiwi huh what are you doing what are you doing huh I don't know if I need this here it's too close to her eye um, I don't think I need that there. I don't like it. I'm going to leave it because I can just make flowers near there enough. And I'm not going to worry about the back. I'm going to do a little bit more texture. So I'm going to take... 
I need some regular straight orange. I have this color orange and I'm gonna get a little bit of this Primo. Oh wait, I have some of the Sculpey, so I'm just gonna pinch off a little piece of this and I'm gonna use a little bit of this brown. So I'm gonna fill some of these holes like I did on here with the different colors of clay and add some of those little bumplies, just a couple because you know I told you this one will be the most elaborate because uh, I've I've done everything already so I'm just adding a few of these bigger circles with my etching pearl put one down there a uh, couple medium ones. This is a medium etch and pearl. Hi, Kiwi. What you doing? My, why not add a couple small? See, I'm, I'm going to overdo it. This is something that I have been doing since I watched um, Chris Capono, and I've done the um, sun catchers and different things uh, in, in her style, but I love it. I love adding all this texture. Now I have this big, wait, this big ball tool. So in some of these big circles, I'm just going to make a divot. I'm going to make a little dent in there. And I can either fill it with clay or, oops, see, I made a hole. That one all, went all the way down. Or just leave it. Same thing with, I'll use my regular old ball tool and just do the same thing. Make it a little deeper in some of the medium ones. And then just make some holes in general with this. Some divots. How about... Um, all right. I need to make a couple of bigger ones that aren't inside a circle. So just a couple of little, see that's inside a circle. So some that aren't inside a circle. Just some. All right, now I'm gonna take this brightest orange and roll it out. Let's see what I'm getting here. Okay. Hopefully I'm in the shot. Take a little pinch of that. And I'm going to fill this little divot. Just gently push down. And that's it. Just leave it there. Because when I add the after I bake it, I'm going to put paint on top of here and all the paint will go into the nooks and crannies and it will just define all this texture I'm adding now. Chris um, mixes colors of clay a lot when she's doing a project like this. Um, so she'll just take a little bit of a different color and add it to her base color and keep adding to change the color. I just tend to, to use the, the color as it is on my, pa on my palette. Like, I'm a bottle baby when I paint. So I'm doing it similarly with the clay. So let me take a smaller little ball. And this is the same color 
maybe it's a tad different because you remember but still it gives you a little bit of different texture or you know so see I put a little ball of clay inside that divot so I'm gonna go away and finish that um, let me let me change it up and put a piece of, a couple pieces of green in here I don't know how much you guys want to see you you guys are great though I mean you never complain I make long videos that's for sure let's put this in right in here in the front how cool is that I love it it just pulls the color all around and get a little bit more and we're gonna put it in here big brother's on I'm gonna turn on the volume So I like that green green. I'll use the light green too so I don't want to overdo it with the dark green. I have to leave a couple spaces for the light green. But man, I love that. Look at that. Can you see that? How cool that looks? I'm going to get the light green and do a couple. I think I'm just going to fill this bigger notch. And you can also use the ball tool, I'll show you. Take the big ball tool and it turns it into kind of like a crater. I love that. Oh my god, it looks so cool. I'm going to do that one. I want to put something right there. Keep it round. I'm going to put something there too. I'm going to put a light green. I could put an orange, but I think I'm going to put a light green. Something right there. Right there. I actually think it would be better dark, but I'm going to put this light one. Um, That looks cool. I'm happy with that. I'm going to use the texture tool a little bit and stop touching it. But I still have to make the flowers. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until I make the flowers to finish texturizing because I'm going to be holding it a lot more. 
I'm going to do the same thing to the top here. I have to add stems and I'll put a, try to put a couple curly cues, but look how cute that's turning out. Isn't that amazing? Unbelievably cute. All right, I'm going to take a little break and I'll be back. All right, so I've decided I'm going to let my camera charge up and I'm going to come back tomorrow and add the little flowers. We're going to do some applique technique. So I'm going to let this sit. I'm going to finish my, but look how cute it's looking. And I'm going to put some uh, flowers on here tomorrow, okay? So I'll be back. Thanks for watching.